Ooh, this looks cool. This looks like that game. Uh, oh, what's it called? Angry Boys. No, 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 no. It's that mobile game with the uh, Angry Boys. It's Angry Boys. I mean, do you want to get sued? Quiet. Oh, okay, I got you. Um, anyway, I need to get through, so could you uh, move your house made of sticks and stones? <laughs> if you want to get past me, you're going to have to go through me. Uh, okay. Hmm, that was easy. Anyway, let's go ahead and make some physics in Anime Studio. Okay, one of the really amazing things about Anime Studio is that it has the ability to use uh, physics. So you can animate objects without actually keyframing. It'll just make them for you. So right now I have a picture here that I created a few years ago um, when I was learning about physics. And so I have this background right here that I made in uh, Photoshop. It's called Angry Boar's Background, and it's just a picture for the background. But then I also have all of these vector images that I created in Anime Studio, and they're just rocks and boards. And uh, what you need to do, where the background itself is not going to be animated, so you don't have to worry about that. But we do have to create a group for physics to work. So I'm going to create a group, and we'll just call this gravity. Just so, so you know that anything in here is being affected by the physics. So I am going to grab all of these layers and drag and drop them into the folder. And you can see right here at the very bottom I have gravity floor. And nothing's in there yet, but we need to make at least one layer um, the floor. So all of the rocks and stuff don't just fall through when you start playing the animation. So in the, with the gravity floor selected, I'm going to turn the grid on by hitting Command G. And what I'm going to do is draw a shape and I'm just gonna draw it over the ground and actually let me turn the grid off for a second because I want this part to be of the ground also so this little ledge right here and I'm just gonna leave it red so you guys can see how this actually works so now that I've drawn a, a vector object that I want to be the base of the floor where everything is uh, standing, we'll go ahead and double click the group, the gravity group folder, and click physics, and click enable physics, and just apply that. Hit OK. Now if I go into the timeline, you can see the rocks and the floor all start falling downwards. That's because if we go into the physics itself, you can see that the gravity direction is pointing downwards right here. And the magnitude is how, how hard or strong that effect is. So the first thing that we need to do is double click on our gravity floor, click in the physics tab, and then click non-moving object and apply. So now if I go into the timeline and play, the floor does not move and you see that the objects that I've drawn actually collide with that object and actually animate on their own. Now that we have the floor established, I'm just going to, well, I'll leave it on for now so you can still see. I'll turn it off at the very end. So now that I have um, all of these objects, what I wanna do is uh, arrange them. Um, so I wanna make a uh, Angry Bird-esque type animation. So let's go ahead and select some objects on frame zero. And I'm going to go ahead and move these down and set them up. So I'll speed up the uh, video for a second. And all I'm going to be doing is I'll, I'm going to be setting my objects directly onto the floor and then, and then um, duplicating to make more and then even making maybe duplicating and then uh, while holding shift, turning them so they're at 90 degree, 90 degree angles and then reshaping them to create a scene. So I'll do that real quick and get right back to you. All 
Okay, I built um, a little structure, very unstable structure, but um, I tried to place the boards um, clo as close as possible to the ground so when the animation starts playing they don't tip over. But as you can see the rocks over here, automatically I didn't stack them very good so they just kind of fall apart. Um, which is okay, we could just go back to frame zero and then um, kind of readjust them. I think, uh, let's see, which group do we got going on here? Got that one, that one, that one. Just trying to group the uh, structures together. So I know that this, this one, this one, and this one are the top. So I just drag those up a little bit so they're all together. So let me click on all three of those, yeah. Maybe I need to take off that large rock at the top. So let me find that. It's that one. I'm just gonna move it on top of this one. Little barrier type thing. Let's play it. Nope. Um, part of the reason they're falling too is because I haven't got them right next to the ground So they're hitting and then kind of jostling a little bit Like that So Let's see if I can't move them Even closer And it's partly I think the, the way that I shape them uh, part of the reason why they're falling like that. Let's see. Let's. Oops. Move them down a little bit. What I really need to do. Maybe, well, let's take those rocks off the top ones and see if that helps at all. So I'll grab these. I'm just going to move this over here. Move that towards the ground. Yeah, they're still... I think I didn't construct these very good. So you know what? I'm going to delete them. This one's a little wobbly too. Let's take that out. Uh, large one. We'll go ahead and put this down here. I think that's good. Okay. So now that we have this, this is a really simple structure, but you can, you know, create anything that you want. And I'm gonna double click on the gravity floor and make it invisible. So unclick the visible and apply and it disappears. Now that just means that it's not visible when you're rendering. You can see if I zoom in those uh, blocks that I drew are still there. So the, the floor is actually still there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use another object to collide with this. So I'm going to move, oops, actually, you know what, I am going to drag the um, background into the gravity uh, layer and because it's a p picture it's not going to move anyway. So it's this way I can move the entire scene and if I grab the gravity folder, use the um, transform layer tool and I'm just gonna shift this over into my scene real quick and now I'm just going to just for time I'm gonna um, draw just a, a ball and we'll go to frame zero let's add a new layer Um, actually, you know what, instead of drawing ball, I have, I have one of my characters that I made, so uh, let's delete that. 
we are going to import um, an anime studio image. So import anime studio object. And I have an angry boar right here, not a pig. And I'm going to import him. And let me rename that boar. So here's the character. He's fully rigged and can talk and do all this kind of jazz. But I'm going to draw him into the gravity layer. Like that. And shrink him down a little bit. Move him onto the scene. And I actually have him animated, so he's talking right there, you can see. But what I'm going to do is, since he's part of this gravity um, folder now, he actually has physics applied to him as well. So I'm going to put it on frame zero, put him up in the air, or actually on the ground-ish. I'm gonna double click on his layer and click under physics, and he has physics enabled. And I'm actually going to um, do initial direction. I'm gonna tilt the direction to go up, upward, you can see right here, and turn the speed up and apply. And so this is the direction he's gonna start flying and the speed was set to zero, so he wasn't moving. But now that I have it turned up, if I scrub through the timeline, let me turn this speed down quite a bit. Let's go to two. Now if I scrub through the timeline, you see he starts immediately moving in that direction. And when he collides with other objects, it affects those objects. So it, he hit that the structure and the structure moved. Now, because physics, um, you can change the property of physics, we can go actually change his density. And that's how heavy he is, or the object that is moving is. So if I change the density and turn it up, when he collides with this, um, the building it should hit harder, but it's not. Let me, oops, turn that up. Let me see. Friction. You basically uh, play with these settings. Um, let's see more friction that doesn't do anything okay so now that we have him flying I think what we need to do is I'm gonna apply that actually instead of the character let's go into the whole gravity um, folder and go into physics and let's turn the gravity magnitude down I think that's gonna make it everything a little lighter so I think this will destroy the uh, building or at least make it easier to fall down so we'll apply that and there we go see now even with the character doing the same exact motion because the gravity is not as heavy when it hits the uh, structure everything falls apart and my character kind of goes rolling off real crazy which is okay I think that's a pretty cool effect that's basically physics, and that's how I did the very beginning of the animation. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. Thanks. Okay, I just wanted to follow up on the video I just did because um, the last part of it, I ended up doing a lot of adjusting to make sure that parts didn't fall. And there's actually an easier way to set your objects. So when I play my animation, you can see some of these objects start to move just automatically that rock just moved because gravity was set to it now if I go back to frame zero and I'm just gonna have this floating in the air and I can do that by click double clicking on the layer while it's in the physics group and then click on physics and click start asleep so now oops I didn't apply it physics start asleep and then apply so now when I play it you can see that it's just floating in the air so what that does is it freezes your um, objects and you have to do that on every layer that you want it to start um, like that so um, 
now that it's frozen, the way that I animated this character is I had um, my little dude kick this guy. And the way that you um, just automatically get something to move within your timeline. Um, so I have the boar character and I want him to start moving towards. I animated my character kicking and then right when he kicked um, my boar character, all I did was under physics, he's he's also starting asleep, so he's not moving. And then at the moment that I kick him, let's just say at frame 54, with the my boar's uh, character selected, I go up to animation, nudge physics object, and I just set it to the direction is going this way. I I don't really have to mess with these settings that much. You barely have to. Um, it, it basically just act, activates it. But since this character already has, um, under the physics tab, I have a initial direction and speed set, it's automatically, as soon as it nudges, it's gonna activate uh, these properties. So if I hit okay, once, once the timeline hits 54, it's automatically just going to start flying in the direction that I had set underneath the layer uh, properties under the physics right here. And so once that happens, it, it collides with the other objects and your physics uh, animation begins. And I believe, um, let's go in here once again. I'm going to change the physics. I'm gonna try and aim him a little higher. So I'm just gonna change this initial direction and crank up the speed a little bit and maybe the density and just see I'm gonna try and hit this block because I believe once it's touched, it will start animating. <laughs> that did not work. Uh, didn't even hit. Let's try that again. Physics. Let's change the angle a little bit and apply. Still not hitting it. Let's go. But you can see this is really, uh, really, really fun thing to play with. Um, with your animations. Oh, come on. Almost, that board almost hit it. Let's try it again. Um, let's change the gravity of the entire thing. So we'll double click in the folder this time. Let's change the gravity magnitude. We'll turn that down to 1.2 or 3. So now everything almost, I think might just float almost. Oh, there we go. So now you can see that board, once it hit the, the rock that was set to asleep, is touched, it, it begins to animate. So I just wanted to let you know that's how you um, activate certain parts of your uh, physics objects. And again, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. Thanks.